Well, very clearly, there there was a long process that started on February 16th with the vote to disapprove of Yatsenyuk as prime minister, uh, but at the same time not to vote him out. So in doing so, they, they sent a clear message to Yatsenyuk, uh, you're not going to stay till the end of summer. Uh, you got to get out, and you can go out on your own terms or we can push you out. So that began the process, uh, which essentially lasted two months. Uh, the first candidate, Poroshenko, said uh, on the day that, on, on February 16th, the day that, that Yatsenyuk was uh, given his, uh, let's say, his, uh, his uh, severance warning, uh, was uh, the president mentioned Grossman. Uh, then he quickly backed away from that as, as there was not a lot of enthusiasm, there was not enough enthusiasm, obviously, for Grossman. And then it, it appeared for a little while that Yatsenyuk might stay. Then that switched to, well, maybe he'll go and maybe yet, and, and Yuresko will come in. So early March, the first part of March, it did look as if Yuresko might be uh, the new prime minister. However, uh, she made it very clear, I'm not going to be a symbolic prime minister. I'm not going to uh, go beg the West for money, for billions, and then to have it stolen uh, here you know, by, by people, by oligarchs and, and, and people in the government. So by putting down these, these tough markers and demanding veto power over the cabinet, uh, which, you, you know, that uh, I think in many ways it was wise on her part not to be used as a pawn, uh, you know, to, to maintain the status quo. Because the worst thing that could happen would be you get a reformer like Uresco, and she's either not able to do something or – you know, she becomes uh, a, a mask for what's going on behind the scenes. You don't, you don't want Uresco to be, become prime minister and then merely be a mask for the corruption that's going on behind the scenes. And she didn't want that either. So she's put down clear markers saying, if I'm going to be prime minister, then I'm going to be a real prime minister. We've got to have a technocratic governor, government, no quotas to the parties, and we're going to pick the best people for these jobs. Uh, that did not go over well with uh, the president and his people uh, as they have – uh, you know, political debts to pay, so to speak. They got to take care of certain people, and, and so does Jackson Yuke and and other vested interests in the government. So, as a result, uh, enthusiasm for Uresco waned. Uh, obviously, there was an outpouring of, of support from the West, uh, not from the government, so to speak, but certainly from the diaspora. Um, I think you know, rank and file Ukrainians also. Uh, you know, uh, the, the people that were on the Maidan were excited about that prospect. So. Uh, there was a moment uh, where you know these things ebb and flow, and uh, Uresco's moment was was early March, uh, and then that passed, and then Grossman became de facto the the candidate again, and maybe that was the intention of the president all along. Nobody knows. Uh, maybe that was was dangle Uresco out there, see if she can put something together, and if there's not an, if the if the West doesn't force my hand, then we're going to go with Grossman. That may be the, may have been the strategy all along. However, at the end of the day, Grossman did emerge as the as the candidate. They had a they had a very difficult time. Uh, took them about two weeks really to put together the votes to get Grossman as prime minister because there just wasn't a lot of enthusiasm. Number one, the president's popularity is 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 low. Uh, the latest IRI poll, uh, the International Republican Institute poll that came out just a, a day or two ago, uh, put his popularity approval rating at around sixteen percent. Uh, versus about 70% negative. So he has a very rapidly declining uh, favorability rating, which is even more rapid than uh, Yushchenko and Yanukovych, uh, two previous presidents at, the, at this point in their presidency. So because of that, and also the sense that because Grossman is from Venezia uh, and he's somewhat of a, a considered a, a Poroshenko protege, that, you know, we... We already had a Donetsk clan. Uh, under Kuchma, we had a dnieper clan. Uh, we don't need a Venetia clan. Um, and so there, there was a sense of maybe too much Poroshenko right now. We want to we want to digest the Poroshenko we've got and, uh, you know, spread spread the wealth politically in terms of political power. Uh, nonetheless, that happened, though. Eventually, they pulled together the votes. Now, how do they do that? They pulled together the votes with the Poroshenko bloc uh, and then... They found they, they provided an exit strategy for Yatsenyuk, an exit strategy where he could save some face, some some preserve his political viability down the road, 
And then on the vote, what we saw was all but 20 uh, members of People's Front and the Poroshenko faction voted for Grossman. They picked up 11 independents, and then they also uh, got the uh, Kolomoisky's uh, Renaissance faction, Vidrozhenia, as well as uh, the, the People's Will faction, formerly led by the late uh, uh, Igor Yeremeyov, now led by his business partner, Stefan Ivakiev. So they had to rely on some oligarch faction votes to, to get the 257 votes for Grossman. But in the end of the day, uh, they were able to secure the votes. Um, so, uh, you know, these things are not, uh, most things in Ukraine are not very linear. You know, you don't go from point A to, to point Z in a, in a straight line. Uh, they, they tend to be very cyclical. Uh, they like to dangle names of candidates to see, to test reactions. And I think that, I think to a degree, you know, the president and the administration may have been dangling Uresco's name to see how much support there would be. Um, maybe that's a, that's a card they'll come back to later if things get really, really bad, so to speak. Um, and uh, I think they wanted to see if the West would try to force their hand, which the West did not, uh, because the, the, the Western governments don't operate like that. But uh, sometimes the Ukrainian government thinks the Western governments operate like that. To put it into sports terms, when you have a great quarterback that the team loves and they win, they win championships with, uh, and then you trade away your, your star quarterback and you put somebody else in there, uh, you know, it's a young quarterback, kind of untested. Uh, you just, you, the coach makes it real clear. He says, you know what, just read the playbook and I'll call the plays from the sidelines. You just follow the plays. So I have a suspicion that Mr. Dan Luke. Uh, as an unexperienced, inexperienced quarterback is going to follow the same playbook, the IMF playbook. And uh, they make it real simple so you, you can't mess it up. Um, you, you either do these things or you don't do these things. And as long as you stay within those parameters, uh, then, you know, th- that uh, everybody's happy because the money keeps coming. Now, I, I, I have no doubt that Dan Luke will follow the IMF playbook. Um, will he have this, uh, you know, dynamic mind and, and be this great reformer, um, you know, time will tell. Uh, there's no reason why he cannot be, but there's also nothing in his career that would suggest that he's uh, going to go down in the history books as a, as a great finance minister either. But at the end of the day, if he does follow the IMF playbook, you know, his, his time will be considered a success. And I, th- I, I you know, Poroshenko's visit to Washington t- uh, at the end of, or the first end of March, early April, That was largely about securing support for uh, continued IMF support for Ukraine, regardless of whether or not Uresco was prime minister. And that's something I put in my blog is part of that mission to Washington was asking, you know, if if we if we change up the finance minister, you know, is and and, but we still follow the rules. Is the support still going to be there? And the answer was yes, because Western governments operate on on principles, not personalities. Uh, So. In that sense, Poroshenko's visit to Washington was successful. It gave him maybe not a green light for Grossman, but it gave him a yellow light. At least it wasn't a red light. So that allowed him to go forward. So we'll see with Dan Luke. I, I suspect he's going to follow the playbook. Nothing fancy. And, uh, you know, coach is going to call the play from the sidelines.